Yeah. So you have more scarves. I do. You want to show us I some? I have a bicentennial Dixie cup that he drank Gatorade out of. On All stage. right. So how did you get so from the stage you got that? Yes. Okay. After the show, I asked Charlie. And I have a 7-Up bottle from his hotel room <laughs> on New Year's Eve. That's cool stuff. Yeah. I, it, I mean, you know, how do we ever verify that? But <laughs> Well, I mean, if you got it from somebody that, I mean, it's timing is the issue there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that is the blue scarf. Oh, I wanted to show you this. We have on at Market Square Arena, there were three Elvis fan clubs at the time of Elvis's um, death. And um, so we often, on the 26th, did things down at Market Square Arena to commemorate it. So they had a they had a display case in the arena there in the ticket lobby office. And this is a replica of the one. Now, Grayson would have this on um, in their archives, the original one that was at Market Square Arena. But we presented this to them on the 20th anniversary. Okay. And it says... 20th anniversary of Elvis Presley's last performance, the final 1126 sold out concert. So 1,126 sold out concerts in 1970. We remember you. And that's the Taking Care of Elvis Memorial Benefit uh, Committee, which is your fan club. Mm -hmm. That is TCP whenever you see that, friends. And this was done in 1997, so that was mm -hmm. 20 years to the day. Yeah. That was the 20th anniversary. That's, that's incredible. So we just had the trophy company you know make a duplicate so we now do you said that there's uh a display with something of that sort in the the back the new basketball arena the original plaque that we presented mm -hmm. um is in the new field house okay and there's a, a case there that has some market square memorabilia now what does the field house mean that's where they play basketball, right? Right. Okay, so, so it's, it's, it's an arena. Play. Yeah, but they it's call an it arena, the field house. but they call okay. it a field house. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. It's kind of built like a... So I mentioned when I was showing the plaque downtown that they got, if they gave money, donated to it, um, that they got some things for donating. Do you want yeah, to show us the, what you got? Inside the plaque itself is a, is a time capsule. And we put a lot of things in there. Um, the fans. A scarf that you got is in there. Yes, there's a scarf that I got. That, as hindsight, was maybe not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's what Ashley Drew said, too. So, for the record. <laughs> um, when I told her about it, she went, what? But what people had, people sent um, remembrances, things they remembered about Elvis, yeah. if they'd seen him in person. And, um, so Set. all that is in the time capsule. Mm -hmm. And so if they donated or, or gave us something to put in the time capsule, we, we sent them a uh, thank you letter and explaining what um, our fan club does because we do um, all things for charity. I always knew that Elvis's music would go on forever, but I wanted people to always remember his humanitarian mm -hmm. way and his giving heart. So our organization... Does benefit. He was a uh, uh, legendary giver. Absolutely. So you, they so get this, a, which it shows the size that's of the, the size plaque. Of so the this the is the marker, thing that we so. saw downtown, the mm -hmm. marker. And then we. Um, they got a photograph. There it is, right there. I believe. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then they got the photograph. So this is the photograph your husband took mm -hmm. that's in the marker, mm -hmm. and then that's your ticket mm -hmm. that is actually right there, the actual right, ticket. True. Right. <laughs> And so all this is actually in the marker. So they got this to commemorate yeah. it as well. And it's also numbered up to 200. That's 183 it of 200. It is. And matter of fact, I just talked to John Bailey. I think I'm going to send him some of these. I don't know if any of the fans would like them. I guarantee you they would. But um, I think I'm going to send him a few. Yeah. He was looking for um, the picture because he had um, some ticket stubs he wanted to frame. To, yeah, to go with it. Yeah. So uh, you have some more scarves? Yes. Did you want to show us those? Well, I have the one over there, and I have this one. This was a... Uh, Which show? This was the blue... Uh, you know what? The blue uh, and white ones. I'm not sure which is which. I know this is Bloomington because it's different. Mm-hmm. This is the one that was with his costume. This is not the ones Charlie... Right. 
Right. It's Charlie folded up. Yeah, Those were he, that's part of his costume. Out. That's yeah. right. However, Charlie did t show me how to fold them. He showed you the Charlie fold. <laughs> yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's um. Now what is this red? I think that's from a tribute artist. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I don't know where the other one is. I thought there was one more. But anyway, I have lots of photographs. I tried to collect photographs from all the shows we went to. And, and she was very helpful today, by the way, friends, because I was here in Indiana filming and reached out to her, and she helped me with some photographs in Terre Haute uh, and some stuff with Market Square and all that. So you were very, very helpful. That's how I ended up here, <laughs> is I was communicating with you because uh, somebody said, hey, Kay is from that area, so you need to contact her. Yeah. Yeah, that is very, very cool. I'm so happy to meet you. Oh, it's nice to meet person. you. And this is a this is your Elvis room. Yes. You've got all of your Elvis stuff, all of your books. <laughs> but you have real deal Elvis stuff. Not just store bought stuff. You have real deal stuff like that that Elvis actually gave you. Oh, I have to show you this is really cool. This is a promo piece for Elvis Close Up, the deluxe box set. Okay. And we have the autographs of almost everyone. Yeah, I see DJ. Um, Jerry Ship. I think Dick Rowe. I think the whole TCB band. Yep, Dick Glenn Rowe, Harden. Um, James Joe Burton. Esposito, Ernst Jorgensen. Yeah, I see that. Ernst right Jerry here. Jerry Schilling, George Klein, the Jordanaires, DJ Montana. Marion Cobb and Jimenelle McCall. Richard Davis. Richard, yeah. Jerry Schiff. That is very cool. That is very special. That is. You got a, a good portion of those folks Jack, are, are I think gone. Jack Soden even signed it. Oh, I, I think that's Knox Phillips. Yeah. Knox. Oh, there's Jack. Jack oh, I see it. Jack it. is yeah. on the right right there. <laughs> that is very, very cool. So a lot of those folks are no longer with us. Yeah. Yeah, that is extra cool stuff. And well, there's got a nice June, June 26th, so that's Market Square right there. Yeah, I think that's a reproduction. But you were at that concert. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing is, let, let's talk about that for just a minute. You, you alluded to it a while ago, but the way you were talking about no Ticketmaster. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when you don't have Ticketmaster... The way that y'all pulled off going to all those concerts was pooling resources as friends. Even different fan clubs all pulled their resources together, and people would go and buy a block of tickets, Absolutely. spend the time in the line. That way everybody didn't have to go individually and then mm -hmm. share it amongst everybody. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because today everybody's got Facebook. You stay in contact with all the people you've met, even people that are live far away or um, people that live out of the country that you've met during Elvis week and stuff. But what's amazing is there was the same kind of connection with the fans back then. Mm -hmm. There was a network. <laughs> now, it wasn't online and it wasn't easy to access, but, you know, you'd meet people at concerts and become friends. and um, Exchange phone Bob numbers had a, and actually a, mail. Yes. Use exactly. stamp. Exactly. Exactly. And um, <laughs> Sean Shaver had a fan club, and Bob Heist did, and the thing that was so cool for us around here, Bob had a, a he worked third shift, and, and back then there was such a thing called the Watts Line. It's what we call a 800, it's what's now called an 800 mm -hmm. number, but back then it was a Watts Line where you could call anywhere, and so... <laughs> He knew someone who worked in the colonel's office, and the colonel never released the tour until all the dates were set, but this gentleman would let Bob know when a contract was signed for a particular uh -huh. venue. So if, that, if he'd gotten a call, he would spend some time on the Watts line in between his night watchman duties, calling people to say, hey, <laughs> Elvis is going to be in Indianapolis on such and such a date, and, you know, so we divide up, you know, I mean, if the tour, like that October 76 tour, 
had so many shows right around here. So we had to, we had a bunch of us that divided up and went to different places. So we could buy, t you could get 10 tickets, each person could buy 10. So like if it was me and my husband, we could get 20 and, and uh, then we divide them up between everybody, you know, and go to all the shows. And, and you know, the closer you were in line the, to the front, the better your seat was. So that's how you went to 29 shows? Uh, most of the time, yep. Yeah, that is incredible. <laughs> how many years did that go on? He, I, you know, my kids were very young then, so I was busy being a mom and a brownie leader and that kind of stuff. And uh, so it wasn't until 72 when one morning we were still in bed, but the radio came on to the morning talk show. And all of a sudden I heard him saying, yeah, Elvis Presley's coming to, <laughs> I went flying out of bed and went, did you hear that? <laughs> now that particular time, <clears throat> I said to my husband, who do we know that we can get tickets? Because back then, the ticket um, agency was run through the, tra the big travel agency. I mean, either bought them at the arena or there was ticket outlets, you know. So as luck would have it, his um, business partner knew one of the owners of the travel agency. So he said, he called and got the tickets, but I was like a nervous wreck for the months preceding it because I didn't have the tickets in hand. And, and they kept saying, well, it's okay, you know, Charlie's got them and not to worry. And I'm going like, I want them in my hand. <laughs> yeah, saying you have them and having them is two different yeah. things. And we had good seats. They were, I think they were like 10th um, row, but center section. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. So that my first experience was good, not, you know, up in the nosebleed section.